In this presentation, we will understand for loop with range function. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The first topic of this presentation is introduction to the range function. The second topic is for loop with range stop. The third topic is for loop with range start stop. The fourth topic is for loop with range start stop and step. And the fifth topic is points to remember. So, let's get started with the first topic that is introduction to the range function. So, what is the range function and what it does? Range function returns a series of numbers for us. It returns a sequence or series of numbers based on the arguments we provide to it. Let's now see the syntax of range function and with the help of that syntax, we will also understand how range function works. So, let's see the syntax. The syntax looks like this. Range, start, stop and step. These are the three arguments we can pass to the range function. According to these three arguments, the range function will return a series of numbers. The first argument is start, which represents the starting position of the sequence. The default value is considered zero. This argument is optional. If we won't provide this argument, then the default value is considered zero. Next argument is stop, which represents the stopping position of the sequence. Note that stop value is never included in the result of the range function. So, let's say that the start value is 0 and stop value is 5. So, we will get the sequence 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. We will never get 5 in the result. Therefore, one thing is clear that stop value is never included in the result of the range function. Also, note that stop is the mandatory argument. This is not optional. This is the reason why I have not written a default value here. The third argument is the step argument, which specifies the increment value and the default value is 1. Therefore, this argument is optional. Let's say that start is 0, stop is 5 and step is 1. Then we will get the normal sequence 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 because step is 1. Step value is 1, this means that increment is by 1. This is the reason why we are getting the normal sequence. But what if step value is 2? In that case, the first value of the sequence will be 0. The next value will be 2 because to obtain the next value, we must add 2. This is what step represents. So, 0 plus 2 will give us 2. The next value after 2 will be 4 because 2 plus 2 is 4. So, in this way, we will get the sequence 0, 2 and 4. We must stop at 4 because top value is 5. I hope with this it is clear how range function works. It returns a series of numbers based on the arguments. Now let's move on to the next topic that is for loop with range stop. We know that stop argument is mandatory for the range function to generate a series of numbers. Range stop generates a sequence of integers starting from 0 which is the default value of the start position to stop minus 1. This is what we have learned already. Now, this range function is quite useful with for loop. Now, what is for loop? We have already understood what is while loop. While loop allows us to execute a piece of code certain number of times. Similarly, for loop also allows us to repeat a certain piece of code a certain number of times. How for loop works? We will understand this with the help of an example. The structure of for loop is little bit different from the while loop. Let's see this with the help of an example. Let's write the for statement for i in range 5. We are using range function here. We are not using the condition like what we use in while loop. We know that range function will generate a sequence of integers starting from 0 up to 4. So, we'll get 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 as the sequence. These values are one by one received by this variable i. i initially will receive value 0, then it will receive 1, then 2, then 3 and then 4. After receiving the first value that is 0, the statements inside for loop will be executed. 
Then after this, I will receive value 1. Then again, the statements inside for loop will be executed. Then after this, I will receive value 2. In this way, the statements inside for loop will be executed based on the sequence that is generated by the range function. As range function is returning a total of 5 values, therefore, the statements inside for loop will be executed 5 times. So, this is how for loop works. I hope this idea is clear. So, for loop uses range function to repeat a certain piece of code a certain number of times based on the values returned by the range function. Here we are using variable i. i will receive those values returned by range function. Now, let's type print i because we want to print the current value of i. After completion of this for loop, we will print done. Now, let's execute this code step by step. First, variable i is created. Then, we need to execute this statement. Initially, i will receive value 0 from this range function. Therefore, 0 is stored here. i is now pointing to 0. After this, value of i is printed, which is 0. So, 0 is printed on the screen. Then after this, i will receive value 1. Therefore, this must be replaced by 1. Now, i is pointing to 1. After this, i is printed, which means that 1 is printed on the screen. Therefore, we will get output as 1. So, up to this point, we are getting 0, 1. Now, after this, i will receive value 2. Therefore, this must be replaced by 2. Then after this, we must print 2 on the screen. Therefore, this time we'll get 2 on the screen. Now, after this, i will receive value 3. Therefore, this must be replaced by 3. And then 3 will be printed on the screen. Now, after this, i will receive value 4. And then 4 is printed on the screen. Now, the for loop terminates because this is the last value that i can receive as the argument passed to the range function is 5. This is the stop value. We will get values 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, 4 is the last value here. After this for loop, done is printed on the screen. So, we will get done on the screen. So, with this, I hope it is clear how for loop works. It allows us to repeat a piece of code a certain number of times based on the range function. Now, let's move on to the next topic, which is for loop with range start and stop. We know that range start stop generates a sequence of integers starting from start to stop minus 1. Now, this time we are providing the start argument as well. If two arguments are provided to the range function, that the first argument is treated as the start argument and the second argument is treated as the stop argument. We will get the sequence from start to stop minus 1. Now, let's combine this range function with for loop. Let's see one example for this purpose. Let's say this time the for statement is this, for i in range 1, 6. This time we'll get values starting from 1. We'll get 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Inside this for loop, let's type print i. And after this for loop, when this for loop terminates, we'll print done. Let's now execute. We know that the resultant output in this case will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then done. Because these are the values we are receiving from the range function. So, I hope it is clear how to use this range function with for loop. Now, let's move on to the next topic, which is for loop with range start, stop and step. This time we have three arguments. This range function generates a sequence of integers starting from start, incremented by step and stopped at stop minus 1. Now, let's consider one example. This time, we will provide three arguments to the range function. This is how our for statement looks like. For i in range 1, 10, 2. I am passing 2 here as the step value. So, we will get the sequence 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. Inside this for loop, let's type print i and after this for loop, let's type print done. 
After execution of this for loop, we know that we will get these values 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, and then we'll get done on the screen. So, this is how this for loop works. So, with this, we are done with this topic also. Now, let's move to the next topic, which is points to remember. So, there are some points I want you to remember from this presentation. The first point is that the range function only works with integer arguments. It will not work with floats or any other type. The range function only works with integer arguments. The second point is that all three arguments can be positive or negative. Up to now, we have seen the positive arguments, but we can pass the negative arguments as well. We will see in subsequent presentations when to use negative arguments. Up to this point, you just need to understand that all three arguments can be either positive or negative. The third point is the step value cannot be zero. The step value can never be zero because if the step value becomes zero, then this means that there is no increment at all and hence there is no need of step value in the first place. And this means that the range function will never return the range that we desired it to return. So, it makes sense that the step value should not be zero and this is the reason why the default step value is one. So, with this, I hope all points are clear. Now, we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.